Hey Tacticians, Niberia here. With the first Golden Spatula Cup behind us, we've got plenty of top-tier EMEA gameplay to break down. It's time to open Pandora's Box. We'll start with Stegzor's board, a classic tempo composition that played a starring role throughout the tournament, Azir. This composition focuses on getting strategist units on the board and relying on the damage of duo backline carries, Azir, and Lux. Both Lux and Azir get their main synergies for maximum power. Nasus and Cassante provide bulk and crowd control and enable the Shurima synergy, giving Azir a boost to his favorite stat, attack speed. Lux gets her Demacia core through Garen and Jarvan. Jarvan's CC absolutely ruins enemy boards, locking them up for long enough for his backline carries to start chewing through the enemy frontline. Stegzer's Azir is holding three attack speed items. Rageblade increases his attack speed with every auto attack, ramping him up smoothly into the fight. Static Shiv shreds MR to increase his and Lux's damage, and Quicksilver keeps him safe from any stray CC. Ideally, this slot would be filled by a Gunblade for some healing and extra damage, but the Quicksilver will ensure that Azir can attack away for the whole fight. Lux's Giant Slayer and Guardbreaker give her bonus damage against the biggest and beefiest units, allowing her to dispatch them with ease. The third Demacian Radiant item will make her pack an even stronger punch. The key augment here is Long Distance Pals. By keeping his Nasus and Azir far away from each other, they're each granted massive amounts of stats from the other. In the final fight, the Swedish Tactician positions Cassante in the corner next to a massive Zed, giving him the chance to boot the Rogue out of the ring before the real fight begins. A well-positioned ZZ Rot portal saves him, but despite the massive threat now roaming free across the board, Stegzor's Lux dutifully fires away behind her massive Nasus frontliner. Alongside the Sun Disk from his Shurima's Legacy augment, Stegzor's board is able to narrowly defeat the Slayers. Let's move on to the most explosive lobby of the final day, with four reroll compositions making it into the top four. In the final showdown, we'll see Stegzor run it back with strategists and a shiny three-star Azir against Scapaeus, who not only managed to find a three-star Akshan, but a three-star Shen as well. The Akshan board has few core units. Three Freljord and three Shurima are mandatory, but Akshan doesn't need any other synergies. This means you have multiple free slots open for strong and uncontested units. Shen is not a standard inclusion in the Akshan composition. The stun of Jarvan makes him the frontliner of choice. In this game, however, I saw that while all eight players were alive on stage 5-1, nobody but me owned a single Shen or a single Aphelios. I tried to 3-star one of them on my level 8 rolldown, and I was lucky enough to hit a 3-star Shen. Equipped with double scaling items in Ginsu's Rageblade and Titan's Resolve, Akshan will excel in drawn out fights. With an Infinity Edge on top, his main source of damage, his spell, can land critical hits, making him an even more potent carry. Thanks to his Dragon's Claw, Shen works wonders against AP-focused compositions. A Shroud of Stillness further stifles spellcasters by slowing their first cast each round. Rounding it off is a Protector's Vow, letting Shen get off that massive three-star shield early in the fight. Zephyrs are the key to victory. Our Czech champion was able to nab an Azir with his, pulling Stegzor's main carry out of the fight for five excruciating seconds. Akshan now had time to ramp up to full power behind his impenetrable Shen frontline. Scapaeus's augments were the key to his ascendancy here. Salvage Bin to play for tempo and item flexibility, and duplicators from army building to bolster his forces. Of course, we couldn't have a GSC wrap-up without our champion, Sasa, or his disgustingly powerful Ravenous Hunter, Warwick. Rapid Fire Cannon and Ginsu's Rageblade give Warwick a massive amount of attack speed, and the bonus range from RFC keeps him safe from enemy CC and damage. Bloodthirster provides all-important Omnivamp, keeping our woofy boy alive to scale to infinity. The key synergy is, of course, Challenger, with Sasa sticking six of them on the board. Warwick appreciates the attack speed, and the set in the front line gives him the bonus tankiness from their shared Juggernaut trait. There's some creative positioning going on here. Kaisa goes into the front line to eat up the enemy Zephyr, buying time for Sasa's carries to ramp up. 
He's matched the sides perfectly, with the dangerous Noxus carries far away from his core duo of Warwick and Callista. Katarina jumps into the empty space in the middle of the board, right into the claws and spears of Sasa's carries. Darius doesn't have a chance, and the challengers obliterate the enemy board and nab Sasa a clean victory. There's always more trouble to be found in Pandora's box, but that's all we have for now. Go forth and use it to win some games, and we'll see you next time.